morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me welcome you to this doorstep with Federal Minister of the Interior, Seehofer. Uh, he will start with a statement, and you can then ask questions. Minister, you have the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the first informal council meeting of the Ministers for Justice and Home Affairs. I'm very much looking forward to the meeting. However, there are two issues, because unfortunately, we are unable to meet in the wonderful city of Dresden, which was originally planned. But we need to hold a video conference, uh, just like many others in these days. Of course, you can do a lot and influence a lot in a video conference, but it does not replace personal meetings, according to my view. And secondly, there are two very important topics that we need to solve. Uh, there is a third issue that we need to solve later on. We will start with the European Police Partnership against the background of international crime, which does not stop at borders, and that it is all the more important today for the police to cooperate at international level, that they share information more intensively, and this is particularly true for crimes which have a strong international dimension, such as drug crime and child pornography. The second issue is search and rescue at sea, which, for which we still haven't found a good solution. Whenever um, a vessel arrives, we always take huge efforts to distribute migrants to EU countries, but it's always a small number of member states that are willing to admit migrants, and this is unworthy of the European Union, because we are not only a community of security and uh, an economic community, but we are also a community of values, and this also includes saving people from drowning, saving people at sea, and having a good procedure at a European level, regardless of whether they, these people are entitled to protection or not. And if they are entitled to protection, we should expect solidarity from all EU member states to admit these people. You cannot solve uh, this uh, question by simply leaving it to Italy, Spain, Malta or Greece. I hope that we uh, will achieve uh, a situation in which P uh, member states will reconsider their position, uh, where they will find new ideas. And over the past few years, many member states simply refused to find a solution. Uh, we do not have the, European, uh, the common European asylum system on the agenda today. There is the decision at EU level to, first of all, find a solution for uh, funding, including the Fund for Reconstruction in Europe, and then to look at the important uh, substantial issues. And for this reason, um, Commissioner Johansson will uh, submit a proposal if, uh, the, um, if an agreement for funding has been found. So she will um, submit a proposal on the Common European Asylum uh, system. But this will certainly be a very difficult issue to solve over the next few months. I'd be happy if, during our presidency, we would at least find a political agreement on the most important issues. The last uh, refugee crisis was in 2015, and now it's high time for the European Union to come up with rules and regulations which help us fulfill our humanitarian mission and which also manages migration in line with clear rules and structures. So far as to the beginning of our informal meeting, and I'm available to your questions. We will start with Michael Winde from DPA Brussels.
Good morning, Minister Seehofer. Thank you very much. I have a question concerning the reform of the common European asylum system. You already said that the proposals have been belayed. Uh, do you believe that Germany will make progress during its council pre uh, presidency because um, the proposals will be submitted in September? And last year in Malta, you said that you hope that 12 to 14 countries will join in. We now only have four to five joining in the search and rescue. Uh, operation, and this is not due to the corona crisis. Why should anything change? Have you heard anything from the capitals? Well, I'm confident that the, uh, that the proposal of the Commission on the Common European Asylum System will be submitted and that we will have another three or four months to not only discuss this issue, but also come, to come up with conclusions with regard to legal Acts. We will not have su sufficient time, and so this is why we closely cooperate with Portugal, because they have the next EU presidency, and that maybe this issue will then be concluded and finalized during the Portuguese presidency. Now, concerning uh, search and rescue, uh, well, it's my uh, experience that if you have a difficult issue at hand, you simply have to stick with it, you need to work on it, that you have to try time and again to find a solution and that over time you will be able to solve the issue. But of course um, there is no doubt that this is a very, very difficult issue and without the help of the heads of state and government we will not come up with a final solution. But my, the issue of migration then there is no doubt is a question that will keep us busy for uh, the time to come because we do not have a, a common rules in Europe and uh, it is quite embarrassing that a community like the European Union is unable to respond to a, an issue of such huge dimension. This is true for climate change, the protection of people and uh, uh, protecting jobs. I think that this is one of the four most important uh, questions in Europe. Mr. Stempfle from the ID, Minister along the EU external border, there are pushbacks, so the uh, migrants do not have uh, the possibility to uh, apply for asylum. And if you say that in September the proposal will be submitted by the European Commission, and uh, what do you think? Do you think that the position of hardliners will become even stronger if they say, well, uh, the pushbacks work quite well? The, do you, don't you think that people will get used to the situation? No, this is a fundamental violation of human rights and human dignity, and I don't think that this will hold, uh, uh, that this will need to continue for the future, and for this reason this is not a solution for me. I would never um, give in to hardliners and say, well, everything has been uh, ruled and regulated now. We need to make sure that we ab uh, ab uh, abide by rules of the state of law, that we also take human rights into account. The European Union and the federal government will never say yes to such a situation and we will never get used to such a situation. Mr. Beseke from RTL and TV. Good, good morning, uh, Minister. I hope you can hear me. Um, the Justice Minister, Ms. Lambrecht, said yesterday after the informal meeting of Justice Ministers of the EU, she said that uh, she would uh, follow uh, the idea of having the ECRI study of racial profiling. So will she talk to you or will she do this study? And if so, why? Well, if I, another member of the Cabinet, if uh, they want to take the floor, then of course they have the right to do so. Of course, I uh, also have a lot of um, need for discussion with my Cabinet colleagues, and I think it's, um, it's what you do among colleagues. If there's the request for a discussion, then you talk to them, of course. So on this study, I want to say again, for weeks now we've had a discussion about the police. Uh, 
it is also somewhat disparaging. And these um, things now have to be dealt with first, and we are in the process of that. So this ranges from this article in the Tuts newspaper all the way to the anti-discrimination law of the federal state of Berlin. And in this period with this debate, I don't want to commission a new study. Uh, well, I am in favor of concluding the work that we are, have been doing or that we are doing at the moment. And in particular, since the devastating events with uh, Mr. Lübke and uh, Halle and Hanau, as a result of that, we adopted a, a comprehensive legislative package for fighting uh, racism, and we included the public service into that. We also created a new a post at the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution, so the Domestic Intelligence Service, and they will compile a situation report on that. And I here, again, I want to say that those things that we have agreed have not yet been fully implemented. We still have to breathe life into that, and sometimes it's a characteristic feature of politics that um, you come along with new ideas, although maybe the old ideas have not yet been fully implemented. So that is my position. I'm in all my political life, in particular in my current post, I've been in this post for two years, I have always spoken out uh, adamantly against racism, extremism, and uh, um, xenophobia. And I think more happened, has happened in these two years in my term of office than in the time before that. And I think we can discuss that uh, while being more relaxed about this, I think. I cannot see any uh, structural problem, neither in the uh, police, the federal police, or the public service. So uh, it is not, I think, the right time to conduct the study, because first of all, we have to deal with these two other issues that we have already, um, or these two other um, decisions that we already uh, have um, um, started. Um, last question by AFP. Uh, good morning, Minister. I would like to come back to uh, search and rescue operations. What, why are you optimistic uh, that now you have uh, some kind of trigger to get some movement into it? So what kind of incentives do you see for other countries to take part in that 10 months after the Malta Declaration? Uh, you mentioned the heads of state and government. Is there some kind of uh, pressure that you can exert? Can you link that to other topics? to get more momentum into that, and what kind of benefits or what kind of solidarity should countries show that do not want to become part of this mechanism? Well, Mr. Traut, I think it is my, part of my modest experience of life and that you should never resignate in politics. You should always um, pursue and fight for goals that you consider right. And I think rescuing people from um, from the seas, I think that is a, a task where you can never give up. And that is why I will continue my fight, and it is also in line with my experience from my life that sometimes if you insist, if you continue your discussion, if you continue to bring further arguments that you, in the end, succeed in making headway. I hope, I, I still believe in um, convincing people on the force of conviction, and if that is not su uh, sufficient, then you have to think about other things, but I don't start a I won't start a discussion in the EU Council Presidency with some threats. Maybe that was the background of your question when you referred to other means uh, to make other countries join. Well, I, I won't do that, and uh, I um, rely on the force of arguments, but I'm not naive. I know that this is difficult, and um, um, and uh, well, we'll see whether we'll have to link that to other topics uh, later on. Well, thank you very much. Uh, th so you have the possibility to ask further questions uh, this afternoon at 3 o'clock in the press conference with Commissioner Johansson and uh, Minister Z.